Is protesting the only tool of movement building? No. No. Go ahead. There are other things that you can do. You know, everybody can't get out in the streets. There were people that were part of the civil rights movement that were not a part of the protests because some reasons like physically they couldn't be a part of the protests and other reasons as well. But there were people in the background doing things like some people were responsible for making flyers, right? Like some people were responsible for handing out flyers. Some people were responsible for the mutual aid portion, which is making sure everybody had food. Everybody had a lunch that were going to those protests and things like that. Some people were responsible for booking guests to speak at these events. So there's different things that you can do when they didn't have social media and they were able to get over 250,000 people in DC, we have social media, right? So we should be able to get those numbers more than those numbers that they had there, right? So we have tools that they didn't have. So there's that, there's other things that you can do. You can organize at your job, whether it's you trying to start a union. We've seen this have been happening more so over the past couple of years, more people trying to unionize. So there's the labor front that you can do, but also there's worker co-ops. And Marco has talked about this on RBM multiple times, like unionization should not be the last step. Professor Richard Wolf talks about this all the time, that your end game should be worker cooperative so that you own a piece of the company yourself. You're not just you know, under the the, the, the supervisor and, and the CEO of a company that you work for, there's nothing wrong with being a part of a union, but we've seen where the union management has basically dismissed what the union members want, what the rank and file want, and the union management just basically makes their own decision in the end. So sure. I think worker cooperatives is another way, but there's all these different things that you can do. It doesn't have to be you out in the streets protesting because again not everyone can do that uh physically and some people can't do it because of their jobs so yeah so uh eric i also want to go to you uh as far as uh what are some in your mind some background things that can be done outside of just doing protesting because everybody thinks that doing at work on the ground or action on the ground is just oh coming out there with signs we shall overcome what else besides that can be done in order to help build a movement in your view yeah i mean i mean firstly i'd i want to give like say that i strongly agree with with what everybody's been been saying about about mutual aid about um about you know like sabby just said work, worker co-ops and all these things I guess what I would, what I'm, what I'm wondering is, is there a way to have an umbrella for these things to have, to have something more along the lines of, a, or have as part of this an overall movement, so that when we're protesting, when we're doing mutual aid, when we're talking to people, we're saying, you know, oh, and I'm part of this movement, and these are the demands of that movement, you know, these are the goals. And and this is you know and come join us and let's try to go at these things together, you know. For me, I, I would focus on the money and corruption. You know, it's it's say you know you know your your government's corrupt and just following the money. And so I guess that's where where, where I come from is is there a way to to have all of these and like Roger Meadows is always um, hitting on is um, uh, ballot measures right and that's and what I say to Roger is you know yes I, I really agree with you Roger but can we can we make this bigger can we have you know a movement that has some kind of cohesion you know and, and to me having a clear set of demands is a way to have that kind of cohesion to to bring it all together and make all these things cumulative and powerful. Sure. I don't know, is it possible? You know, how, how could we get there? Okay. Uh, well, we sh mean, should we let, should we let oh. Eric show those demands since he just mentioned it? Yeah, sure. Uh, let's yeah. share the demands really quick. Um, and then we can continue. So I have it here. All right, so this is the 11, from 11 demands. Eric, go. Yeah, so this is, um, you, you can see this on the site, 11demands.org. Should be pretty easy to find these days. Um, you, you can hit on um, uh, 
Well, yeah. So there, I mean, there, there is this start, right? The, the education is always, you know, this crucial first step, right? And everything that's happening out there is, you know, the, and of course, online is a big part of that of spreading the word, but also in person and all these things. But if you want to, if you want to go up and hit set of demands. Sure. Yeah. Um, just, um, so I always put the, the big money in politics and government first, just because it's it's the real action item when people are asking for solutions. But we, we can just go at the big items like like pretty quickly. But yeah, so there's fix the big money. You got two, you know, healthcare for all. Part of the idea is to have um, is to have strong demands. You know, not not don't ask for Medicare for all. You know, that's a compromise. Ask for real health care for all. Ask for a, a national health care system for the U.S. Right? You go to the third one, you know, a minimum standard of living for everyone, right? Don't don't just ask for a $15 minimum wage, you know, ask for a real standard of living. Decommodify the basic needs, you know, give everyone, how you know, demand housing for everyone and just take that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm proposing we, we take these kind of hard lines, hard tax, tax. Um, you know, number four, end the wars. You know, it's you know basically just cutting these things, disband NATO. You know, just saying no, it's all wrong. It's all none of it should be happening. Uh, number five, reject censorship. You know, today now they're trying to ban TikTok, and so you know it's 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 a strong no. You know, it's just none of it should be happening. Um, you know, six, uh, racial and, and criminal justice reform, you know, yes, provide reparations and treat them like they are a debt owed, you know, and don't be pussyfooting around with, with, you know, oh, we're, we're going to give it to organizations or something like that. You know, reparations needs to be a non-negotiable part of any larger package of real revolutionary reforms. And, you know, you got, you know, cut police budgets and, and so forth, you know, um, and the drug war, legalize it all. You know, we need to be pushing, you know, just hard tax like this. All right, we'll just finish off quickly. Seven, um, climate emergency, you can go to eight, immigration reform, abolish ICE. You can go to nine, uh, the election system. Um, you know, go, you really need open source transparency, of course, ranked choice. Uh, 10, uh, revamp taxation and funding. You know, we, we should be thinking big about what we, you know, taxes are a big deal. And those that have the money should be paying them. Um, and lastly, uh, democratize the enterprise is, you know, get um, really push hard on worker co-ops and make them a real engine of, of real change. All right. Thank and, you. So, and so, yeah, the, the idea is to have, you know, a list like this that captures things that, that get people excited, that, that get people, you know, saying, you know, yes, of course, I want that. We need that. Um, and to have that be um, kind of a, a, a center of, of ideally a larger movement. Okay, Afini, please. I also have a hard stop at seven, but y'all know I love y'all real bad. <laughs> um, I am, yeah, I mean, honestly, I just really want to finish off by saying that you don't have to be well trained to be an organizer. I know like a lot of the times the organizing space seems really inaccessible and it's not that. And that's also on organizers like myself and others, like we don't make the organizing space as accessible as we could. But I think when we're talking about these things, like people see it as like this big abstract thing, but it only takes 3.5% of the population you could be a part of that 3.5% that actually decides to transform this society. Um, and I think that the more we actually have these conversations, the more we talk about the importance of mutual aid, the importance of building real autonomous dual power, because, you know, folks be talking about dual power, but, you know, it be, it don't, it don't be looking like that. Don't be looking like how I was looking in Africa or how I was looking in Cuba or how I was looking in Russia. You know what I'm saying? Dual power is a real threat to you, the United States, to imperialism, to the West as a whole. And we can't be afraid to do that. And I think all of that really starts with building trust with folks. So please, if you have not already, join like 
shit, join a church group. Start there. It's like if you if there are folks that do Salvation Army every week, go go talk, go tap in with them, go see what they got going on. But find your people and start really talking about the issues that are important with your within your community. Start building those systems of care, of community care within yourselves. And you'll be surprised like how much stuff you'll be able to do when you actually commit to that and watch it grow. Um, but yeah, like I'm also super down with all the 11 demands as well. <laughs> but yeah, I got to go train yeah. y'all. So <laughs> I'll talk to y'all. All soon. right, Sabs. Good. Thank you so very much. It's so good to see you again. Love you, sis. Bye, Feeny. Bye bye. Good talk, Feeny. Join other organizations. Here's my point. You don't have to necessarily start something as long as you join something, right? One of the things that was talked about was uh, joining other organizations. Uh, I'm going to give some examples because, uh, Sabs, you talked about uh, joining unions. What about tenants unions, right? That's another mm. aspect as well. Because sometimes we may not, like, I'm disabled. I don't have a regular job. But are you a tenant? That's but a good point. Neighbors. Yeah, like one of the most popular ones is uh, in Kansas City, KC Tenants. Mm -hmm. uh, they're really popular. You guys Google them. They've done a lot of like actions uh, to help people. Like just honestly, a lot of tenants, from my experience talking to people with uh, dealing with housing issues, a lot of tenants don't know or are unaware of the type of rights that they have when it comes to housing, particularly in, in Massachusetts, because Massachusetts is actually a little bit more friendly towards the tenants than the landlords, unlike other places I've lived. But I, oftentimes I find that a lot of people are not aware of the rights that they have as a tenant here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, you know, our comrade Nick, he's a part of KC Tenants. So if you guys have not heard, then you guys can also look at different tenants unions in your city. This is just an example, but this is one of the groups that you guys could possibly join. I'm going to share another group. Now, this one is out of Orlando. This is Real Orlando Revolutionary uh, Education Action League. They also do on the ground work as well as they have the People's Free Kitchen and they're doing stuff like, for instance, in People's Free Kitchen, they actually have a farm where they're actually growing food for the community. They actually do things like this, as well as they also go to city council meetings and things like that. So this is what they do. They also partner with pro-Palestine groups. And so they are doing work on the ground as well as doing political education. Could you possibly either start or join groups like this in your city? You don't necessarily have to be the one to start it, but could you join one? This is also very important as well. So I just wanted to put that out there too. Yeah, I, I will say um, if you're thinking about, you know, getting involved in activism, um, probably first step is to join something that's already established. I mean, that's that's how I started. I started activism when I was in high school. So but I joined organizations that were already established first and then, you know, went from there. But uh, the first step is just showing up just to show up. That's the hardest part for people to actually just get out the door and show up to these meetings or events. I think a lot of times people are nervous, you know, their first time. So. But yeah. 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 